your RAF reporter, presenting the truth to the station warrant officers of the world. Cranwell. One day recently, the mess was unusually crowded for lunch because it was the 25th anniversary of the foundation of this famous RAF college. And so Cranwell had a visitor. There was an impressive turnout of cadets for his inspection. With him were many high-ranking officers. For instance, no prizes offered for picking out Lord Trenchard. Later, the visitors were much interested in a demonstration of field equipment, boilers, showers and the like. But no doubt you are already familiar with these dainty domestic devices. The roof of the world. This is a story of the days when the Japs held the Burma Road. The days when they were strangling the lifelines of China. The Allied transports were flying all day and every day, carrying supplies from our great bases in India, across the spurs of the Himalayas, over to China's war capital of Chongqing. The pilots called it Over the Hump, and it meant flying through worse weather and over worse terrain than any air route in the world. This is Kunming, and we're safely in China. From here, supplies went on by road to their destination. On the reverse journey to India, the transports carried a very different cargo. Refugees, orphans, victims of China's war. China's want is her allies' worry, and never were hazardous flights made in a better cause. From the roof of the world to the top of the earth. This is a Lancaster, flying not on ops, but on a voyage of discovery. North, along the great war road known as the Alaskan Highway. North, over the jagged peaks of the Rockies. North, well as far as you can go, to the pole itself. The Lancaster is the Ares, famous for her flight around the world. This time, on navigation research over the North and Magnetic Poles. And here she is, arriving back at her base in Britain. Ares fame had preceded her, and a big crowd waited to welcome her back. The first person to jump out was her skipper, Wing Commander McKinley. The Wing Commander has piloted Ares on each one of her spectacular flights. I don't think that the crew of the Ares quite expected such a reception. They were forced to nip back inside to put on caps and battle dress. As well as her special instruments, Ares carried polar outfits for the boys, just in case. Naturally, there were many questions to answer, such as, uh, where is this magnetic pole anyway? Well, it's not where you thought it was. All honor to Ares and her gallant crew, out of the risks run by men like these comes the future safety of navigation on the air routes of the world. War is a question of weapons. Ours against theirs. And the answer is planning and production. Work in the laboratories and at the drawing boards, turning ideas into possibilities. Work in the foundries and the machine shops, turning those possibilities into facts. But all our secret weapons have not been offensive weapons. Our biggest problems were concerned with invasion, with supplying a great army across the channel. Planning and production gave birth to the vast scheme known as Mulberry. In this great undertaking, a thousand problems were solved by extensive planning. And by production, the whole enterprise became a fact in the astonishing short time of six months. 
and with Mulberry came Pluto. Men and women had worked for years on Pluto, and although they had no idea of the ultimate purpose of their task, they did their work with care and accuracy, because they had absolute faith in the planning behind the scheme. And then, after D-Day, the scheme became fact. Pipelines leading across Britain to the coast. Pipelines unwinding like thread from giant drums onto the bed of the sea to carry oil to the armies on the continent. And because of the planning and production of Mulberry and Pluto, the Allied forces swept across Europe, fueled and supplied. But Hitler wasn't the only enemy. The weather could be a friend or a deadly foe. The RAF was losing good planes and good men, not because of enemy action, but because of fog. And so came Fido. Heat evaporates the water vapor, which makes up fog. So Fido consisted of gallons and gallons of fuel burning in pipes arranged around the runway. So much heat was set up that the fog banks were dispersed. And so the planes came in from thick fog to land in the clear. Mulberry, Pluto, Fido. But these weapons were not weapons of force. And wars can only be won by the application of total force. And so planning and production worked to turn out weapons which would apply the maximum amount of concentrated force. The final answer was 10-ton Tessie, 22,000 pounds of HE in one bomb. Because of the size of this weapon, each Lancaster can only carry one. Even then, the machine has to be specially modified. A second's error on release, and the bomb would fall many yards off target. So a special release gear had to be designed to act instantaneously. The first appearance of 10-ton Tessie was at Bielefeld Viaduct. This carried a vital rail route into the Ruhr. After a few smaller bombs, the monster went down. A feature of the big bomb is the crater it makes before it goes off. Watch the left-hand corner of the white puff of smoke. The bomb makes its crater, and then... And here is the result. Although not a direct hit, many yards of the viaduct have been destroyed. The Nazi world is in ruins, but the Far East War goes on. And there too, victory will be achieved not only by the efforts of Allied fighting men, but also by Allied planning and production. And it is with this thought in our minds that we say farewell to the beautiful islands of Japan. This item is for those of you who are living and fighting in strange lands under exacting conditions. For those of you who are away from home. Once in a while, we're bringing you a message from a hometown. Perhaps it's your hometown. It may be London, Glasgow, Bristol, or it may be Coventry. This is Howard Douglas speaking for the people of Coventry. 
for folks like Jack Clifford, Bert Barford and Joan Mellor. Coventry is just as busy as ever it was. You can hear the factories buzzing for miles around. Trucks and transport for the army and aero engines for you chaps in the RAF. But at the same time, we're thinking of making other things. Things not connected with war. Mind you, no chromium plate or other trimmings, but civvy stuff all the same. Getting home seems to be even more of a drama than ever. It's just cue and wait, or walk, <laughs> but not for me. But all the way from Umber Road to Folesville, not likely. Yes, it's cue for everything these days. You should hear the missus. Points and perseverance, that's what she says. But don't get the wrong idea. We're not starving, far from it. Things are a bit short sometimes, admittedly. But they can be got. We do all right. Bit rough at the locals, though. One night they're open and the next, well, you've just had it. By the way, there's one thing that has come back again. I don't think the younger kids quite make it out. But I notice they put it back all the same. Remember how the market got pranged during the Blitz? Well, it's going again like fun. Anything from bicycles to braces. Old Joe's still there with his camera. Oh yes, and Prince Gypsy Lee still tells you how many kids you're going to have. The buses don't run very late these days, so folks don't go far for their pleasure. But the cinemas and theatres are doing a good trade. Of course, a ninepenny worth of dark costs you half a crown now. Huh? But if the weather's fine, well, the boys and girls go down to the bunny run and look at each other. Or oh, there's cricket in Umber Road, or tennis in Memorial Park. Some of your folks were there last week, and RAF do. Interstation sports meeting. Then, of course, there's the dogs. Same old faces passing the odds, same old faces taking your money too. And same old dog coming in last. That's Coventry today. A bit bashed, but Coventry all the same. Yes, a lot went by the board these last few years. A lot of things we liked too. But we're getting down to a job of planning and working out something bigger. Something bigger and an old lot better. It's going to mean a lot of hard work for all of us, but as you know, Coventry's always been a town of people that thrive on hard work. Same old Coventry and we're going to turn it into a brand new Coventry. So get the thing over, chaps, and come back and help us. <laughs>